This is the first episode of a little series of chats I had with a couple of mates, with a couple of beers. We talk about RPGs, D&D, Pathfinder, a lot of unknown armies, which is more niche than most games out there. Um, mostly because if we want to schedule to have a chat and a beer, these days we need to pretend there's a productive reason to do it. Um, so yeah, we've got a couple episodes of these in the can. I hope you enjoy it. Um, we might make more, we might not. That's kind of how this channel's going at the moment. Cheers. Okay, okay. Opening theme. You don't know how to improvise songs like fucking what's his name? Colin Mockery? No. Colin McRae. Um so, like, let's just jump into it. Um, oh, Jesus Christ. So, Alec, what's your favorite RPG? I like uh, Pathfinder 2. That's a joke. I like Pathfinder. Yeah. I, I, I started with Pathfinder 1. Actually, no, I started with 4E. But um, yeah. I, I like Pathfinder 1. But I think in terms of, like, gameplay and world building, I actually really like Unknown Armies. Despite the fact we've only played one, like, somewhat campaign of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, I really like, I like games where you can have a lot of customization, but at the same time, there are ways to build really simple characters. So, like, when you're playing Pathfinder and, like, you know, you've got fucking 10 million pages of, like, feats or, like, millions of different builds but at the end of the day if someone's brand new you can be like i'm gonna build you a barbarian you just you hit things yeah and most people are well, like sick pathfinder one it's still like cool do you know how to calculate adding fucking strength on the fly yeah but, that's yeah <laughs> and that's the thing with unknown armies why i love it so much as well is you're like oh is there a skill that does this there is now you've just made it yeah like you just write in the skill that you want yeah, the on the fly stuff you can make up with on on, on an army just made it really fun mm -hmm. um we never got to try third edition but mm -hmm. i really want to instead of having skill lists you have uh it's kind of like like personalities or or, mm -hmm. or, so, or sort of like um like aspects of your personality and instead of it being like oh i want to roll this skill like i want to roll pursuit i think is one of the skills mm. you can be like i'm a private investigator of course i can like track this car yeah. and then you roll your private investigator stat yeah so it's like um yeah. it's like in i don't know if it is pathfinder one but like where you've got your profession skill where there's like stuff where it's just like oh yeah you can use your profession skill to do anything related to that profession yeah so like um it is it is one year i remember that yeah and so it was like you had you have uh, profession um, barrister because you were a fucking lawyer and suddenly that means that you can both lie and be diplomatic as long as you word it in such a way that a lawyer would yeah and uh, they they expanded on that mm. in TUI which I really enjoy mm. um, but instead of being all wisdom based it's all intelligence based yeah and that's, that's like the law is, it? Yeah. is that the law that's skills? law skills yeah. yeah so like my character now pirate one has like law pirate myth yeah which I'm trying right. to you know, squeeze into everything. Yeah, I, every fucking thing. I min max for law pirate myth because I'm like a bad player. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bad to have around. <laughs> but it's also fun because, like, I really like that when Julius came in and you were like, I rolled a fucking 32 pirate myth. What do I know about Julius? And I got to make a backstory for Julius. Like, yeah. like the myth of Julius the Black Wave. Like, that was so cool. I love yeah. it. Yeah. And then that just sets up a dynamic for our characters, which I loved mm -hmm. right up until Julius is done. <laughs> Still haven't played since then. Yeah, no one has. Yeah, no one has. Oh shit! Yeah. True. Right. I tried to organize it and it just fell through. Yeah. The yeah, because I mean that's how it goes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Legit. Cool. Is that your whole list of favorites? I mean, yeah, that's pretty much the only ones I've played. Like, I haven't. I've wanted to play a proper game of uh, Mutants and Masterminds, mm. but obviously, I think the one game we played of Mutants and Masterminds, it was getting everyone to like come over for like three hours that we had in the whole session was building characters. Cause that's mutants and masterminds. Like it was, yeah. no one had time to prepare anything. Then I mean, they just, had yeah. weeks and weeks to prepare it. Oh yeah, that's right. Bastards. But I mean, you know, no one actually does that. We never, this isn't me. Hey, 
No, no, this no, is no. We never, we no, never, no. we were gonna do. Yeah, it I remember, I remember with Ollie building characters, and then I had a sick character built for that. It was no, basically, um, you know, a million ants from Rick and Morty. Yeah, yeah it was that. Yeah, <laughs> I was just a swarm of insects. <laughs> so the, my big issue with mutant masterminds is when you have a player like Ollie who loves to min max, mm. then you can like. So he was just describing him describing his character to me was it was like. I was like, we're going kind of street level. And he's like, cool, I can teleport the moon into a building. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to have to do the work to work around that. <laughs> you kind of really need... I love Mutants Mastermind Mind specifically mm. with new players who have never played before, and I make their characters mm. with them. Because yeah. new players always have really specific visions that yeah. like... Oh, like, can, what if my character was a million ants? Not every system's going to have something that works for that. Mm -hmm. Means of masterminds, you can do that for them. And then when you get into the game, it's simple. Yeah. Um, and because you've made it with them, you can set those parameters. Yeah. What was that system that you were talking to me about the other day where you, like, make life choices? And based on how your oh, university goes, is traveler, traveler, yeah. I, travelers. Um, that was fun on my list of yeah. favorites for sure. I love travel oh, so much. I love the Star Wars system. I just remember. I was going to bring yeah, that up. Okay, I love the Star Wars system, where it's literally it's not like it's still a million dice, but it's it's how many successes versus how many failures. Either way, something related to what you said wanting to happen has happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's 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 not. Oh, I don't have the skill for this. It's. I want to do that. It's like, go off. You're not trained, so you're going to have fucking yeah, 10 me, negative dice versus your two positives. This is and then they do it, and you're like, fuck it. You did it. <laughs> to clarify, this is the fantasy flight. Yes, stuff. fantasy flight, yeah. Star Wars. Um, yeah. And the thing I like about it is that it makes failure interesting. Yeah. I, and also if you I'm, can fail with advantage. And you yeah. always succeed you, with you a always disadvantage. always flavor it. There's always yes. so much flavor in a, in a pass mm. or a fail. Yeah. So that's something that, like, when you run that, because mm -hmm. you're the only person that's ever run that that I've played for. Yeah. Is that, like, a lot of work for you? Um, it's it's a little bit of, like, it, it, you kind of need to know the scenario and the setting that the players are in, because obviously you need to be able to be like, oh, like, yeah, they, they succeed at unlocking the door. There's a disadvantage. What could be a disadvantage of unlocking this door? Like, you know, you're, they're sneaking in, into an Empire base, an alarm goes off because obviously yeah. they're going to know when doors are opening or if it's like just some random like hut, you're like, well, maybe it's booby trapped. Like um, it just kind of, and then like as well with failures that give advantage that that's the one I find the most difficult because you're kind of being like, well, you have failed. Like you, you've not, I don't know, like shot the ship down, but you got a success. So I don't know. You've done something in some way a gun that something. yeah like you have to be quite imaginative with it like because it is a lot of like i failed but i got an advantage so you're like oh well when you shot you actually like you the it ricocheted off the shield not damaging the ship but sparks in the cockpit flew and it's blinded the pilot enough that they've got disadvantage on their next roll yeah and it's like a lot of that just up on the fly it's just all like improvisation and you can kind of say whatever you want as well because at the end of the day all it means is they've got disadvantage on the next roll so yeah. it's not like the pilot's blind and they crash yeah and you've won it's like you can say whatever you want as much flavor as you want to throw in there yep. and at the end of the day it's like okay cool there's an extra dice on the next roll yeah exactly yeah yeah sweet man um, that makes me really want to run a star wars thing because so the star wars it was not as fun as Pathfinder, I find, to build a character. Mm -hmm. I bit not, it's like, fun to a build a annoying. story in. Yes, it was yeah. so much fun to play in, but not super fun to build a character on. I felt like I felt like the progression was like a little bit slow, and it's, uh, in 2E specifically, every now and again you find a feat that's like, wait a minute, let me reread this three times, because that yeah. can't be true. Star Wars is you just you get, time it's not. You, get <laughs> <laughs> you just get a bit more powerful, kind of like as you play the same character, you're just slowly getting more powerful. Yeah. I don't know, like, um, Junie, my, my mm -hmm. Wookiee, would, if he hit, would almost always crit, mm -hmm. and when he did crit, it was about 60 points on the percentile worse. Yep. So usually if he could get to you and hit you with his axe, you would die unless you spent a destiny point. Yeah. Which, yeah. And destiny points are mm. like just such a great way of doing hero points because hero points exactly. are in every system these days yeah. just about and just the fact that the gm gets to play with them yeah it's not it's not i'm i'm cashing this in it's i'm giving you 
yeah. potential in the future to use this against and us. The back and forth is also good. Yeah. And it's also like and as the DM, when when all of the like things are flipped dark side up, which is like when the DM can flip them back. And so it's kind of like I'm like in scenarios where I'm like, oh, I, I feel bad because they're doing so poorly, but I'm going to have to do, make them like, I'm going to have to do shit that's even worse to them so that they can use these to get out of this yeah. situation. And that's and it's storytelling. Re- exactly. That's storytelling. That and is- it's such a fun, like, yeah. I love as well, like in the rule books, if you're a fan of the movies, they have the specific in the movie, this is the scene played out through this game where it's That's like Han Solo awesome. is trying to deactivate the comms and he's like trying to do like a sly check to be like, uh, everything's fine here. Uh, how are you? Nothing, how are you doing? <laughs> and it's like, it's like, yeah, you failed, but you know, you have advantage in that you shoot it and it stays locked. Like yeah. the doors are locked, but they are alerted that it's coming in. You, you just threw the guard off and he's like, I'm having a good day, man. And yeah. you get a little bit of, a little bit of extra time before they come to you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, cool. So one, the, the only one of these on my list that you haven't already mentioned, because my list, to be honest, I didn't even put Pathfinder one on here anymore. Pathfinder two has just replaced Pathfinder one. Yeah. Me. Yeah. Um, but so I've got Pathfinder two means mm-hmm. masterminds three, unknown armies two and three, unknown armies one is, Unknown Armies 2 is a direct upgrade to Unknown Armies. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, Final Fantasy... Final Fantasy? Fight, Fantasy Flight Fantasy Games, <laughs> Star Wars. Mongoose yep. Traveler. Because Traveler mm. has about 15 editions. Oh, really? No shit. Different publishers, different... Mm. Traveler came out about... It almost, like, directly after d d It was, like, 79. It was, like, right there at the start. Um, How come I've never heard of it? Because it's D&D. not Dungeons and Dragons and yeah. it's not fantasy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, fair enough. Yeah. There are so many systems out there that have been around as mm. long as D&D. It's just D&D got bought by Hasbro. Yeah. And Hasbro's it's like right. bigger than Transformers, you know? Yeah. Like, like my dad things. knows. Yeah. Thanks Dude, for anyone thanks in the world, if you say D&D, they know what you're talking about. That's why, we, I mean, they got you've got English. You've got, <laughs> I reckon you wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily have to. Yeah, but probably. In every one of those <laughs> of those um, systems, if you're playing one of those with your mates on the weekend, and someone says, "What are you doing this weekend?" You say D and D. Exactly. Because it's easier. It's, yeah. Everyone. It's, it's the it's whole like thing where it's like, cola. it's yeah. Um, get me a Coke. When yeah. it's like, I actually wish for a cola flavored beverage. Yeah. yeah. It's like get, I'll literally. Get I'll get me like, a D and D. Is Pathfinder okay? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> like I'll be talking to Laura, my girlfriend, and it's just like. Oh yeah, you know we're playing D and D, and like she's actually started making like the conscious effort to be like, is that the pirate Pathfinder game? Because she wants <laughs> yeah. to like get the differentiation yeah. as opposed to it just being like D and D. Yeah, cool, whatever. Like it's the nerd game. See, it's yeah. Uh, I I just fixed that with relentless bullying until my girlfriend's just in the game. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Mine's at the point where she's like, I'll play if it'll make you happy. I'm like, no, because then you're not gonna be happy. Like, well, that's the thing. You yeah. never you never want someone to like play just. No. just just to like appease exactly you know? it's because like, you gotta make them interested kind of you know you'd be like you know that favorite movie of yours this is kind of how it would be in that and then they're like okay I'm listening so yeah. i could play like jack sparrow and you'd be like yeah you can play jack sparrow you want to be jack sparrow i'll build you jack sparrow just play, <laughs> this, play this one shot and yeah. then suddenly it's a campaign and you've tricked someone into playing a game <laughs> so yeah this my- is this, this is what i'm lucky because my girlfriend isn't really good at juggling a lot of things at once, so <laughs> bless her soul would be awful. <laughs> so like, it's just there's no there's no contest. It's not it's not wrong. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that was the thing. Is I I like my the whole campaign I ran at the, in the first half of the year was specifically built for men. Yeah, because I'm Harry like, Potter. You yeah, true. You will enjoy this. I know you will. I'm going to make the exact experience that will get you into it. Yeah, which is like and it. What now? She's and and now she's game. an honorable mention on my list of uh, the ideal body. Yeah, right. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't put her on because I felt like I was biased. Um, <laughs> so the only the only system on that list that I didn't put is mm-hmm. Microscript, which we've never mm-hmm. played. No, I've tried. I, I, I think want you to explain it to me once. It's but. a non-linear world building game where the first thing you do is establish the genre of the thing mm. then you build a timeline you say this is the start of it which could be when our town that the heroes are from was founded and the last thing is when the planet that that is on is destroyed you know and then you build scenes that you can add a scene you can never take away a scene right mm. or you you build errors and then like scenes and then moments right so then someone can be like 
you play with note cards, someone just writes down, yeah, that town you love, it got fucking nuked. Have fun. <laughs> um, but the nature of it, because it's note cards, is they shift in the timeline. You never say, like, this is 100 years after this. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. So oh, at some do. point, this has happened. But you can never undo that that happens yeah. on the timeline. Can right. you shift it around on the timeline? Or is it you only the person who's played it can... You can't shift like events before or after it, but you can be like, there's still one more event. There's still one more event before oh, yeah, yeah, it, but yeah, that yeah. will still always happen. And the things you afterwards- can, You can are only after. delay the inevitable. Yeah. And it's not, cause it's not about like, I've built my character, which is my avatar in the world. You're building a world, you're building yeah. a timeline. And this is the one you talked to me about where, you, where we, we, we could play this and then play another like- you play like Pathfinder in that world. In that yeah. world, yeah. That and really it's is. amazing. And it genuinely, you can do the whole thing in like two hours, right? Which is rare for this hobby. Yes. Like <laughs> really <laughs> rare. Um, and you, you have a couple of people and all of a sudden everyone has like things they know and love about the world that they've crafted that they can yeah. be like, I want my guy to be from like, Percy I Omicron 7 because of this culture thing that you added in and then like, yeah. you know, like, future on reference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's that like collaborative storytelling that mm. I think is the big hook of That's this what hobby. I love, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man, it would be so sick. Even if it's like us three that built a world and then maybe one of us and three other people are like playing the Pathfinder in that universe. Yeah, exactly. It's still like, then a little bit of your heart's like, oh. Yeah, exactly. And someone's like, who's this random NPC? I'm going to kill them. And you're like, that was Dom's character. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's the thing is like, you don't even play one single character. Because yeah, when you yeah. they, they were from the, the town that Dom founded and loved with all his heart. Yeah, <laughs> but, the last survivor. <laughs> so the reason it's called microscope is because you're meant to zoom in and out on like moments in time. Yep. And so when you do get into the point where it's a scene, there's no dice. If there's anything where you have major characters which you establish and you say like this is like like lucas farthington which luke came up with like 20 minutes ago mm -hmm. and then alec can be like well this is his father father farthington <laughs> who's a priest yeah. um those are like major characters yeah and then it's like oh this is the point uh, you you only make a scene because you have a question right it's like does lucas forgive his father for blowing up Townton, okay. right? Mm. Um, and you just play out the scene until you resolve it. If there's ever anything that could be in doubt where normally you would roll a dice and do a check, yep. the person who's not in it decides, or you have a vote <laughs> yeah, of like, right. what, what the coolest thing is. And yep, then I can- too much power, man. <laughs> <laughs> but that would go straight to my head. <laughs> but then that's the thing. Then what I'm, but then like, an hour later, you could have another scene where it's like mm -hmm. Lucas Farthington, Father, Father, Farthington, Father, Father, Daddy, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> um, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I want to play Lucas because I have an idea for it. And yeah. then you could play Father Farthington and then like Alex decided. Yeah. So you have to like- Be you, impartial. You have to be impartial. And it's that mm. classic writing thing of like you have to learn to let go and let other people take control of your characters yeah. because they have a vision and it's collaborative. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. What do you we should play microscope, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was this whole thing. It's just yeah. so that I could like, be like, we're playing microscope. <laughs> yeah. Cameras off. We're fucking <laughs> Oh, I it. never hit record. <laughs> so what's, what's your list of favorite RPGs? Um, I don't have a list. I just have the one is Pathfinder 2E. Yeah. Cause I've only ever played three systems. Yeah. Um, and Star Wars, we played that one campaign of 1E and then 2E. Um, I've just got, I've just got 2E because it's, it just took everything that 1E was, took it from scribbling down on a piece of paper, put it all in a nice, convenient app. I know you hate mm. the app. No, I um, love the app. I just, I, I don't like... Change. I, well, <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing is, no, I, I love being able to like just scribble shit on a page. And like, I've got about six like thick notebooks, about 200 pages of characters and notes. And cause I just stopped using a character sheet because for me, I'm one of those people that's like, I'm quite like messy, but it's, it's super organized. My yeah, yeah. Yeah. Someone moves something in your room and, and I'm like, your room and yeah. like, where is all the shit? So there? it'll be like someone, someone's I, like in that person. <laughs> so it's like, you know, I've got like six pages of shit and someone's like, Oh, what's the, what's your like attack modifier. If you use this random weapon and I'll be like fucking 
it's on this page right there. Yep, it's 17. Or like, yeah. well, the 5e game that we played where I was a wizard, I bought a spell book that mm. was my character sheet. I loved that. I loved yeah. being able to like flip through it to be like, here's the spell. I like, literally, I made yeah. a, you know, I had a goblin alchemist that had, I, I bought like a, a, it was like a pink unicorn book. And so I literally just scribbled in that and that was my like alchemy book. And it was shit where it was like, oh fuck, what can I actually prepare today? Like, and it was, it was like almost felt immersive. Cause I was like my, the way that I take notes is probably like if a goblin did right shit, that's how it would be. Yeah. Like it's messy, yeah. disorganized, but I know exactly where the things I need to find are. One, one good example of, of what I, I did enjoy this about one E, but I'm also grateful that two E is different was when I played Draco, um, mm. I, my, I was a, a Draconic Sorcerer and I, I was working out how much fireball damage I did because mm. I had 7,000 feats that meant that if I do fire damage, I do my level and a half this and then an extra dice and then based on that extra dice, there's mm. this much extra damage. And I remember like on the, on the page behind, I had all this math worked out to figure out how much fire damage I did on a fireball, yeah. which at the end of the day was stupid because of yeah. all those bonuses and all the, this is this times this and then this dice extra damage. But then in, in 2 e it's just so much more simple. Mm. So it, it's a good oh. example of, of it's, it's really fun to be able to work it out. But I was like, then no one is, it, it's not this plus this plus this. I had to go through my bloodline thing on. Um, yeah, because you've got three different sources exactly. doing three different calculations. Exactly, and yeah. they, you just got to suss out. I literally had to like write out a formula that I spent like a couple hours like piecing together. Mm. And it was like so complicated and so, so like such a headache. And it's it's so much nicer that it's in one E, uh, in two E, it's just like, it's yeah. this. And, and if, if you get extra damage from your bloodline, it's, it's, uh, a d6 for half your level yeah it's, i mean it's one simple thing i reckon that like i i disagree with that it's just that because we use path builder and it does all of that for us mm. like all of that is all that nuttiness is still there um of, of like adding this oh i've got this bonus from here i've got this bonus from here all that's there we just don't see it because we use the app yeah. i've been making because when I played with um, some people from my course, I was like, and I was like, oh, I want to teach you how to play the game. I banned the app. And, yeah. I, and I printed out these character sheets, not the default one, because the default one's kind of yeah. shitty. And so you, you always need fan-made ones. Yeah. There's a couple of really good landscape fan-made ones that have like mm. animal companion sheet, everything you could want. Yeah. Um, and I was like, we're going to sit down and calculate it. And I realized that was not the go because they weren't as invested as I was. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. so didn't quite work. Should have just let them use the app. Yeah. Oh well. But the but they understood their characters so much better because they're yeah. like, I'm adding my proficiency plus my strength plus my item bonus mm. plus because of because my dangerous sorcery bloodline, I'm adding two, and then because I'm using it in this situation, I'm adding like this. That is there in two e. You're just like we're just we're just like privileged enough to not yeah. see it because of <laughs> path builder two. But what I also like about it is um is if if you want to go through all the extra stuff that's not calculated in the app already, um like you want to know what like the stuff you get from your feats and stuff mm. like that. You just scroll up to about and you just it's all right there. I love it so yeah. I'm so I'm nice. I'm someone who like if I don't write something down myself, I'll probably forget it. Yeah. No, um, I forget it all the time. Yeah, and so that's the nice thing is there. building like a, a one in character, I will like genuinely remember pretty much every single thing about that character, even at stupid high levels when there's 50 things to remember. Because if if I'm physically writing it down, I've got it memorized. And I do feel like in TUI, like even like using the app, it is somewhat similar where I'm kind of like, oh yeah, I can, I can do this or I can do that with it. But like, just, I just love one eats where I can just, I like writing more things because it's almost like a memory game. And because it's like a game, I enjoy it because I enjoy it. I remember it more. Whereas TUI, I'm like, yeah, these are the, you know, 16 things I can do. And I'm like, yeah, that's good. And that's how it interacts. But it's kind of like a, it's, it's only like a, a simple formula to remember and yeah. to build things. And like, I get that that is a lot more user friendly. It's a lot easier to build. But I love the complex formulas. I love taking four different numbers from like a million other things because then it like, it feels like a lot more complicated. Even if it's the exact same character in 1E and 2E, I'll enjoy and prefer 
the like one that takes me like two hours to build over the one that's like 20 minutes because it, it's like you are, it's like when you, when you spend a lot of time working on something, you appreciate it more than like if it's just handed to. And so it's like that it, it almost helps me get into character more to be like more complicated. And if I'm sitting there going like, what the fuck, like what the fuck am I doing? Like this is fucking stupid that gets me more invested because then when I finally build it, I'm like, I'm fucking ready to play this. Yeah, I finally lost this goddamn This fucking character. cunt of a gunslinger. If he crits, <laughs> you're fucked, cunt. Like, you should play a 2E alchemist. Oh, yeah, because no. Because they yeah. are... That's the exact complaint that everyone on the boards and everything <laughs> has about it, is that you have to do all of this extra work mm. just to, like, compete. Like... I love that. That's um, my backup character for, like, the pirate game. I've yeah. Got, I've got, you know, because I've got several of them. But, yeah, like, one of them is, like, an alchemist and, yeah. So, yeah, let me give you an example. Um, So, Luke and I, when we have both have a couple hours spare, mm -hmm. we just 1v1 with 2E characters. Yeah. We, we, have, we have the pirate battle mat we just lay that out you start on one ship i start on the other um and it's, so we just play it like a board game like a tactical board game yeah and i a couple of nights ago i played a level five toxicologist alchemist mm. he's a hobgoblin so with a smoke worker heritage so he can see through smoke he mm. ignores ignores concealed from it um plus with quick alchemy i can make my lower level bombs, which only do like a D6 damage from a level five, yeah. um, create a smoke cloud for a minute. Yeah. And then I and then I max out my stealth. Then I use Quicksilver Mugens to give myself a plus two to anything dex based except AC, but it also damages me like twice my level, so 10, okay, yeah. that I can't heal yeah. for 10 minutes. But it also gives me a bonus to speed. Then Hobgoblin Feet, Sneaky, lets me move an extra five feet when I sneak, and <laughs> If I sneak, I can keep doing it until the end of my turn. Because yep. normally it's like, then level five hog goblin feet, runt sage gives me a goblin feet, which is very sneaky, which adds an extra yeah. five to my sneak. Yep. With the quicksilver mutagen, I have base 40 speed mm -hmm. and I can sneak 30 feet. Yeah, right. Then I have these poisons that uh, he saved every single one, <laughs> made me so angry. <laughs> But um, it's a DC 21 on all poisons because I'm a toxicologist. So even if it's a level one poison, the DC scales up. Yeah. Right? right. Yeah. If there was one where if he had failed it because it was through, from a blow dart, it would have gone to a, and it was a critical hit on the blow dart. Yeah. He got exactly a 21, if he, right. which meant it's a success. Nothing happened. Mm -hmm. If he had gotten a 20, that would have been a critical fail, which meant straight to stage two, which meant flat-footed and clumsy one. Yo. Minus three to AC, you're fucked, die in a hole, plus you're taking a D12 damage every turn while I just hide in smoke. Yeah. Ridiculously complicated. Like, I still lost, but it took like 12 rounds of me like- It was the longest 1v1 we've ever played. Yeah, ever. I bet. Like, it, including like characters where I'm like, oh, I have like 28 AC at level five, when yeah. everyone else has like 22, you know? Mm. Like, like just ridiculous. I had plus 17 to stealth, so I my sneaking and hiding worked on a natural three, right? <laughs> like, just ridiculous, stupid stuff mm. that was still like just barely keeping up, but I had so much fun. So yeah. That's why, that's my pitch to you I'm for doing how it. to play stupid, complicated characters. <laughs> but the beauty of and 2E- And not even be that good. <laughs> yeah, the beauty of 2E is that like the complex complexity's there, but it doesn't ruin the game for everyone else. To be too <laughs> bad, no, it yeah, is exactly. like that difference between 2E and 1E where it's like, I'm stupidly overpowered in this one thing. There isn't really that much of like hard counters. Because, like, in, in 1E, if you want to play a similar build, there is, like, a gripply toxicologist who yeah. is a frog person with poison skin. He rubs a dart and he blowguns it. Blowguns are, like, if you're wearing armor, it's fucked. Nothing happens. You're a dumbass. Well, that's the normal and thing like, for yeah. Alpha in 2E as well, but I have feet. That yeah. also meant that if I crit you on the hit, uh, on, on the actual attack, and then you fail to save, it's a crit fail. Yeah. So, yeah. So, and, but it's like literally, or it's like if you want to build a whip in 1E, a whip build, if yeah. they're wearing armor, you do no damage yeah. until you spend like three feet. So that is the, the feet taxes. Two ships that to, is, uh, two feet to shit, one feet to wipe. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> that's the sort of stuff that I appreciate that from 1E to 2E is that you're not like, all right, I want to take this uh, at level 17. So at some point I'm going to have to take this one feat, which does nothing to my character. And it's just, it's a dump. I literally- That was, that was one of my things about 2E and it's yeah. just, they've taken 
all the random stupid bullshit and just taken it off. Yeah. yeah. It's like um feats in 5e, I found. They were like you get a feat like every fifth level. They were done. Yeah. They there was like somewhere it was like this is you pick this and you can't be you can't be caught. You no one can sneak up on you like all this bullshit. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then there was one feat where it's like, oh you learn two languages. Yeah. But they're they're level the exact same. You can be the same level to take them. And it's like I feel like they took what was intended with the 5e feats and they were like this is how it should be done. Like, yeah, you can take yeah. this feat yeah. and it's immediately useful for what it is. They right. really, they really figured it out with 2E. Yeah. Like there's no, like, I like think you should, um, I feel like they really got it right. If you want to do, like, have you ever played Starfinder? No, I've so been, it's, I, I have issues with Starfinder. It's not, I haven't played I it. I don't, I've yeah. played it. It is almost, almost like playing 2E, but you know, it is still that it was basically they built Starfinder because they were like, oh, let's expand into, you know, sci-fi. And then they were like, all of these systems work really, really well. And they took what was good about Starfinder and then they built TUI from yeah. that. So this whole thing where you choose a race and that influences your health, that Starfinder, mm-hmm. your class influences your health, Starfinder, all that. It stopped making it well, so... I mean, that's been around since the, the fighting man. Yeah, but not yeah. 1E where it was yeah. like, 1E, oh, I'm a wizard elf, so I will die if you cough on me. Like, yeah, it, it's my birthday! <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of favourite builds, so... <laughs>